Living and Enjoying Life the I Am Way. I'm Coach Val, aka the I Am Lady. And tonight is the last week of the year. And I wanted to have a conversation with you that is serious but fun and it's lighting, it's helping me to lighten the load. I'm going to be a little transparent tonight and I want to share some things with you for 2019. Not only that I'm doing, but that you can do to elevate your life. First and foremost, um, some of you do not know me, but um, the last four years have been a battle for me because um, I've been battling uh, the diagnosis of lupus and um, and I have SLE lupus. And a lot of people didn't know, and I didn't know what lupus was when I first found out. Um, and I just started hearing, you know, other people, celebrities and stuff having it. And, Initially, they thought I had MS, which is similar to lupus. They're both um, autoimmune diseases, but um, the, it's based on the symptoms that you have. So the symptoms I had at first were very, very um, impactful on my body, and and it landed me into the hospital. And I, you know, my joints, my body just kind of gave in, and I didn't know if I was going to live or die. Um, they put me on a stroke ward and said that I had had a stroke. And when I got to the stroke ward, I asked all my friends that are all prayer warriors, I know a lot of prayer warriors, the kind that are effective, that know how to go into the heavenlies and pull down strongholds and who know how to fight a good fight of faith. And I called them and I told them, you know, I told my husband to tell them, you know, I'm in the hospital. They think I had a stroke, but they caught it quickly. So they gave me some injection. But to make a long story short, uh, they diagnosed me with a stroke and then the next day they sent specialists in and then they retook the test and when they took the test again they couldn't find any signs of a stroke so I praise God that he helped deliver me from that situation but then they said they didn't know what caused it and so they started doing a whole bunch of tests and they thought you know uh, with MS and lupus it's hard to diagnose because it's very similar and there's many tests and there's many symptoms so they had to take their time it took them about two months to really diagnose me with lupus i went to the best doctors john hopkins also went to university of pennsylvania where my doctor is now and um it took them a few years to find the right treatment for me um because they have to it's an experimental thing so i would feel good for a while um they put me on a lot of steroids things like that and of course that helped me to gain weight and you know people know when you take steroids it's not good and I took it too long over a year and but I just want to share with you that the things that sometimes you think are going to knock you down and knock you out God has a way of coming to you and showing you how to turn that whole situation around you know I, I really felt like giving up when I found out I was diagnosed with that because I have a type A personality. Anybody that knows me knows I, I'm, a, I'm an energizer bunny. I'm always on the go. And then when I couldn't do that anymore, I had to grieve my lifestyle, my, my previous lifestyle, and then I had to change it. But the good news is when you change your lifestyle, sometimes it's for the better. Because what I've learned through this whole escapade is that you have to learn how to balance your life and you also have to learn how to take care of yourself. And so that's why I, I, when, when I'm doing this show, I think about, I don't have to be alive and I don't have to be enjoying my life, but thank God I pray. And even though I still have some challenges, I feel a whole lot better than I did four years ago. And I'm able to function. I'm able to understand what my body's doing. I'm able to start to do the things that, even if it's some limitation, things that I enjoy doing. So if I don't enjoy doing it, I'm not doing it because I don't even have the strength to do it. And for those people who don't really know what lupus is, it's like, you know, most people have a hundred, their batteries charge a hundred percent. People with lupus, their batteries charge 20%. And so it always goes out. You know, you have those batteries that, that quickly go out. Well, that's what lupus is. So whatever I do, it has to be done. There has to be something that's important for me to do. And um, so, you know, so that's cool because I've learned how to manage things that way. Um, and I still, you know, love helping people. I still do the things. I still have a, a gift of teaching. I have a gift 
of um, giving and I have a gift of encouragement. So I'm focusing on, on that more, encouraging other people to start living and enjoying their life. And that's what this show is all about. Um, I'm thankful. I'm grateful that I'm alive now. I'm grateful that I've overcome some things that were challenging. Um, still um, working towards a full recovery because I believe Jesus Christ is my healer and that I will have a full recovery. But in the meanwhile, I'm learning so much about my physical health, my mental health, and spiritually, I'm feeling, I'm finding out that I'm stronger the closer I get to God because He is my strength. Now, the reason I'm being transparent because I really felt in my heart that there's someone who may be watching the show that has had some challenges. It could be a chronic illness, it could be uh, overcame cancer, it could have been we lost a loved one, or it's all kinds of things. But instead of being sad about it or depressed, you know, there's a there's a process. You do go through those times, but once you you have something to look forward to, there's hope. And I believe that Christ has given me hope. That's you know, if it wasn't for Christ, Jesus Christ, I would not. I'd probably be you know depressed somewhere or you know not give, and giving up hope. But I have hope, and I have joy in my heart, and I'm thankful that God has kept me. And it's helping me to learn how to make the most out of a, what you call a bad situation. But anyway, um, it's the end of 2018. I was thinking about reflecting on the year. And as I reflected on 2018, it's bittersweet because I've had some great things happen to me this, this year. Um, I, you know, I wasn't like as sick, you know, it was like I had more good days than bad days. Um, I had, you know, great friends. I had, um, I, it's just so many things that God has shown me that I can be thankful for. And, you know, I have, um, and God's taking care of me. He's providing for me at this point. So I'm excited that I get to live my dream and have this show so that I can present other people to you that are overcomers, that who are living and enjoying life and who um, embrace life itself. And, you know, I, I think it's important that when we're going into a new year, if something is not, is going on in your life or you're having a challenge, that we have to kind of plan to say, okay, how can we get past this? You know, what do we need to do? You know, what do you need to do to overcome? And I think, you know, it's not as easy as it sounds but there are things to kind of shorten the, the, the um, journey, if you will, if you need people to pray with you or if you need to, uh, a professional help, just seek that. Life is too short. You have to overcome that. That's what's challenging you as quick as possible. And sometimes, you know, even when we don't feel like, you know, moving on or pressing forward, you know, we can go to God. We can go to Jesus and ask him to help us, give us strength. And, you know, that, I, I don't even know how to explain it. That's what gets you up <laughs> when you're down. You, you don't, I don't know, it's miraculous. That's a miracle in itself. Sometimes you feel like, I just feel like giving up, I'm tired. And God knows how to get you up and to move you along and move you forward. So I just want to say to whoever's listening and you you know, you're going through something, I, I just want you to keep hope alive, you know, by any means necessary. <laughs> You know, get the right people around you. Do the things that you know to do to keep hope alive. And if you really feel weak and you don't, you need help, you can call me. You can reach out to me. If you don't have anybody to talk to, to encourage you, to help you, you can go to the IamLady.com. My phone number is there. Um, you can send me, you know, an email. But if you want to talk to me, you can call 302-314-5230. That's 302-314-5230. Five two three zero. Now I know this is a serious subject, but do you see I'm smiling because I am so thankful for this season. You know, my family and friends will be around me. I'm alive. I have. I can. I can use my all my limbs. You know, coming out of a stroke, you don't. Some people don't are not as fortunate, but I am fortunate that God has. Uh, put a hedge of protection around me and has also given me the wisdom to know how to move forward. 
We're going to take a break and we'll be right back. Good evening, this is Valerie Brown Ball, a.k.a. Coach Val, also known as the Iron Lady. And right now I'm coming to you from the studios of Heart Ministry Radio. I'm excited tonight because I'm going to give you a leadership challenge. But I've changed the name of my show from Leadership the Iron Way to Living and Enjoying Life the Iron Way. And the reason I said that is because as leaders, this year my focus wants, I want my focus to be on helping leaders to let go and let God, to enjoy life, to smell the roses on the journey at, that they call life. And you know, I found out in leadership, I, I've been teaching all for years, leadership, but we focus more on the goals and getting, getting the stuff done and results. But part of being a leader is enjoying the journey. And so we're gonna, we're gonna anticipate some great things that God's gonna give to us, some little nuggets and challenges so that we can learn to embrace the earth, to embrace the spirit, to embrace the things that God has placed in this earth. He says, the earth is mine and the fullness thereof. He says, I came so you can have life and have it more abundantly. So we're going to focus on the abundant life. Okay, leaders? Let's go. Welcome back. You know, at the beginning, I was talking a little bit about lupus and, you know, and having, uh, living with lupus. Um, and I always say lupus doesn't have me because I'm an overcomer. But I wanted to share with you for 2019 some of the things that um, I believe the Holy Spirit has shared with me. He said a lot of us have gone through some challenging times and maybe in the last year, a couple of years. But, you know, things as, as if you keep on living, things get better. You know, uh, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. And I know that sounds cliche, but I truly believe in 2019 that those of us who have been struggling, God's going to elevate us. And we talked about on Designing Your Life how we need to level up. Well, leveling up means to be uh, conscious about the things that we do, conscious about our bodies, our physical being, conscious of it, um, and intentional about our souls, our mind, will, and emotion, and, and also intentional about our spiritual development. If we develop those areas in our life, we're trying people and so if we develop our physical strength, our mental strength, as well as our spiritual strength, you know, we will be, uh, you know, God can use us to help other people. So if you're the person who has a heart to help other people, you have to first love yourself, love on yourself, take care of yourself. Loving yourself doesn't mean being narcissistic. It means taking care of yourself, giving yourself a break giving yourself some time to heal, giving yourself, you know, I, I was just thinking everything in this century, people were like, let's get it done. Let's do it. But we don't take the time that it takes to heal. You know, you could be sick and the doctor say, stay home for a week and you'll go back the next day. You need to take the time that it takes to heal intentionally. And then once you heal, then you have to take the time to understand how you can stay healed. Understand what's good for your body. Understand the things that may be um, negatively influencing your body or your mental state. And then tr think about the things, the strategies that you can come up with for your own self. That's loving yourself. Taking care of yourself is loving. If you have a child, you want to take care of your child. God wants us to take, he takes care of us and he wants us to take care of other people, but he also wants you to take care of yourself. And that I think is the best thing that I learned from all of this is that it's okay to take care of yourself. It's okay to love yourself. It's okay. You know, and we think we love ourselves, but if we're ripping and running and not taking care of ourselves sometimes, you know, we, we, we are not intentionally neglecting ourselves, but we're doing it because that's either habits, bad habits, or that's the way we were raised or whatever. But, you know, I've learned to put on the brakes and to start loving myself. And now I can love other people better. There's so much that God has put inside of me that I really feel like the enemy didn't want me to bring it out, but it's okay because God's got my back, my front, my right hand, my right side, my left side, so it's going to be said. And I realize that I'm victorious in Christ Jesus, and that's the only way for me, for me. Now, I didn't want the show just to be all about me because it takes a lot to be transparent. It takes a lot. 
And I'm being transparent for a reason because we go through things to help other people. And so if you've gone through some things, all I'm encouraging you to do is to use that, God, allow God to use that to help other people, to turn it around for the good, you know? And we love the Lord, we love other people, but we need to love ourselves. I think that's the biggest message that I got out of this whole thing. And take care of ourselves. And um, I also like to say in 2019, I believe that if we surrender to God and if we learn how to love ourselves and take care of ourselves, God will do the rest. And if we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and peace and joy, that he'll level us up. He'll take us to the next level without effort. You know, if you're grinding, if you're working hard to get to the next level, stop it. God can take you to the next level. Start to focus on the things that are important. Ask God, what is it that I need to do for me, my health, my mental health, my spirituality? What do I have to do for my family? The important things. Keep those first and foremost. You know, a lot of times from a religious perspective, we think, okay, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all things that, you know, we think of, we, we seeking all these religious things. No, he's saying, seek righteousness peace and joy that's who we are that's who he's made us and so we have to learn to walk in who we are just to be who we are to walk with god each and every day the i am way is god's way god is the great i am we are if you will i am made in the image of i am so we have to learn how to walk with him and be patient you know, patience brings forth miracles. And if you're not patient, I would encourage you to learn how to just be at peace and be patient in 2019. God's going to do it. He's going to do it. He's do it for me. He's not a respectable person. He'll do it for you. So I just want you to reach out to me if you have any questions, if you need any coaching, if you need prayer. Visit theiamlady.com. My phone number is there. I'll say it again, 302-314-5230. And when I come back in 2019, um, I'll be back with Pastor Mary. And I'll have other guests. I'll have other co-hosts. And we're going to bring to you uh, things that can help enhance your life, to help make your life the best life that you can have by design because God wants us to be like back in the Garden of Eden. Remember that? That's what he intended for us. But we kind of, you know, through our all of our idiosyncrasies, have changed God's plan around. So right now, we have Jesus Christ. There's no excuse. We can have life and have it more abundantly. I love you. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year. We probably passed Christmas already, but I'm making this right before Christmas. But I want you to go into the new season of good prosperity, good health, and I also want you to go intentionally loving yourself as well as you love others. Happy New Year.